How you doing everybody? Welcome back to Stand Folks for Jesus. Hope each and every one of you having a blessed day. Oh, that sun hitting just right. Get some of that vitamin D3 of that bald head. Ooh, Ooh the book of that bald head. <laughs> um, hope each and every one of you are having a blessed day in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a beautiful day here in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Some of y'all got to come down and visit real soon. Maybe one day, very soon, I'll be able to pay, pay for it. Pay for everything. All expenses paid. Y'all come out and we fellowship or I'll be able to travel to where you at. But um, as they say, the cat is out of the bag. The cat is out of the bag. God has been doing some things, y'all. Our Father has been doing some things. Now, some of you already know. But if you notice, I've been hinting at it. I'm like, hey, I got some things in the works. I got some things in the works, you know. Um, but it's official. Your boy, your brother in Christ, is officially a real estate investor. Officially a real estate investor. You see, we got our generator out there because we ain't got no electricity right now. But it's not only me, but all my brothers and sisters in Christ. Because it was a team effort. God gets the glory. Our, our Heavenly Father, Christ, gets the glory. But it's a, it's, a, it's a team effort. So before, I mean, not before, but since I'm right here, I want to show y'all a little bit. I'm going to um, do a walk around and everything. But there's some land right here, right? Some land. And we got, we got this land too. Now, you may be thinking, well, Brother King, this ain't the land that you originally purchased. No, it's not. This land we bought with the house. We bought this land with the house. So I want to say this up front because I know some people are going to get this thing twisted, right? Let me go in the house because it's kind of windy. This ain't about material material stuff. This is not about, you know, oh my God, uh, material stuff. God gives and can give material blessings. I think I can stand on the porch. God gives and can give material blessings. Are you married? Do you have children? Is that not something physical? Is that not is that not something material, right? God can choose to, to do that if he chooses to. The position I'm in right now ain't had nothing to do with me chasing money or any any other other thing. I don't need to chase money because y'all know my background. I didn't have money, I can get money. You know, that, that, that ain't nothing. But I'm in the position that I'm in now because of my obedience. Now, let me give you a little backstory for those who don't know, and I'm going to lead up to and tell you how I got here. Because when I say this is all God, it's all God. When I tell you the deal that I got on this house, you can be like, that's all God, right? So, y'all know I had the cleaning service. For, for those who don't know, I had a cleaning service for 12 plus years. And the last few years of it, two, two years, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm tired of this. I'm ready for something different. You know, I would just... Uh, being led by the spirit to go do something else, um, but I didn't know what I didn't know what I was going to do at the time. So um, when it was time for me to renew my contract, I told them that I wasn't going to going to submit it. You know, they're like, "Well, you're not going to submit your contract." I'm like, "No, I'm I'm done. I'm you know I'm done and everything." And this is a a, a job like I said, uh, you know, a contract that I had because I had a cleaning service that I was doing for I say twelve plus years because I don't remember if it was. 12, 13, or 14, or 15 years, you know, they all run together and everything. Um, but uh, yeah, when it was time for me to submit my, my bid, because they had somebody else that was bidding and everything, I didn't submit my bid. I'm like, I'm done. I'm moving on. At this point in time, I told my wife, I said, sell everything. Sell, sell everything, right? Sell everything before I change my mind. So she got the selling stuff. We sold everything. We stayed out in the, in the country. Um, you know, nice little quiet place and everything. And we have, but we're in the process of selling that. We have an RV, an older 1983 RV. And we moved into my mother's backyard, me and my family, my whole family. And we lived out of there partly in the RV and partly in the house because my mom's house, you know, it's just her. So it's for her, it's a big house. It's a three-bedroom, two-bath with a uh, with a den and everything. So our area is more so the back area, the den where David and my children um, would play at the time. Was David and then you know Abraham came along or whatnot? Um, 
and I paid I paid her rent. You know, it was it was a good deal for both of us. And her backyard is ginormous. Her backyard is so so big. Um, so like we was on our own piece of property in our in our own lane or whatever. So um, we stayed there for about a year, and I wanted to save up money because I had a plan. And my plan was I wanted to buy a piece of land. And I wanted to build a you know a nice size house, a small house, you know something that we could we could be in, where I didn't have you know it was paid for, so I didn't have to work as much, um, so I can even I could preach even more and be there even more for my family, cause y'all know y'all know y'all know how I be working, y'all know how I be working, and I still get videos done, you know I don't I don't believe in excuses, I give grace cause I know everybody's situation is different, but the scriptures say to be an example. The scriptures say to be an example. So, you know, some of y'all don't know, but y'all know I was on the road driving on cars and everything. And, you know, I would go to Florida and a, a trip to Florida is like 12 hours. And I would go to Florida there and back. And then I would go to work to do the cleaning thing. And I was still making sermons. Some of you don't know that. Some of you don't know that. Um, but that's just how I get down in, in everything, right? The Bible says to be an example. So, you know, and the, and the one reason I, I, I'm like that is just, you know, just the way I'm made. But because the times that we're living in, you have so many pastors, they they make excuses. They they're looking to the to the people, the congregation to take care of everything. But they don't want to do their part. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. I allow people to give to this ministry. And y'all know, I say, if you're not going to give it from your heart. I don't want it. 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 Because you try to throw it up in my face, then that's between you and God. And I ain't, I ain't going to really fool with you or whatever. But those who have supported, you know, that's why I said we have made it a real estate investors. Because don't think I don't know who has who has helped and everything. Don't think I don't I don't know. And whatever the Lord puts in my heart when the time comes, Lord willing, when I reach the next level with this real estate thing, I know who you are. I know who you are. Um, some of you I have talked to about this and stuff like that, and some of you, some of you don't. Um, so you know, I know you're probably like, "Well, dang, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know that." Well, because I keep it in the hush hush for for a reason. You know, uh, I want to make sure that everything goes through, and everything has been gone through for about. We've been working on this project for about two weeks. I got my contractors and everything working on it, and stuff like that. But um, yeah, so I was living. And we was living in our RV in the back of my mother's uh, mother's yard. I was renting it out. Um, and like I said, the goal was not, it, it wasn't this. It wasn't like, I'm going to be a real estate investor. I just wanted a house. And then I thought about like, you know what? Instead of, you know, building this house, I said I could flip it and then use the money, you know, for ministry. And then, hey, I could do it again. I said, it's the same thing as flipping cars. Because, you know, I'm a car guy. Like, it just buy it, fix it up a little bit, and then flip it the concept is is the same and everything so i didn't come in this thing looking to be a real estate investor but as i got more and more into it and i had to learn different things the vision started to grow the vision started to grow i'm like dang dang then i could do this i can do that and instead of instead of doing this i could do this i could do that hmm i can get billboards with the ministry Ministry website, I can send, if I want to send a thousand Bibles to Africa, I can send a thousand Bibles to Africa. If I want to, you know, uh, 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 be able to give the people more, I can, I can give the people more and everything. You know, just be able to help from that, from that capacity because I've helped spiritually. I've helped spiritually and I'm continuing to help spiritually, but I want to, I want to help on the, what we say, financial side, on the, on the physical side, because we do have brothers and sisters in Christ who are in need. And if the opportunity arises, I was being convicted by it. If the opportunities opportunities are there, then why not make the most of them? Why not make the most of them when it's going to benefit not only myself, my family, but my brothers and sisters, um, brothers and sisters in Christ, right? Going for a second because I don't know if that, that wind is blowing. So like I was saying, me being in a position that I'm in right now, it didn't have nothing to do with going in it, trying to be a real estate investor. Nothing to nothing to do with trying to be a real estate investor. I just wanted to be in a position where I didn't have to work as much as I was working so I could preach and study even more. That's what, that was the that was the whole goal for me, right? Um 
So we found a piece of land. I know some of you know that, but I want to tell the whole story. We found a piece of land here in Hot Springs, Arkansas. If y'all don't know, that's why I stay at now. I moved my family from, from Georgia. My wife came down here to visit her mother because her mother stays down here and her uh, now deceased dad, he you know, stayed down here too, right? And pretty much her whole family, most of her family. Um, she checked the land out. We went ahead and purchased it and everything. And then, like I said, the vision started to grow. I'm like, instead of living in it, I could flip it. So I was like going back and forth. I didn't really know what I want to do with it um, and everything. But uh, the focus was on that piece of land. Point, 11 acres, nothing big. It's just a piece of land on a corner lot. Nice little lot and everything. Um, and then we eventually, we moved after a year. Right when, uh, you know, and I, <laughs> I can say it, but I ain't going to say it. But y'all know what I'm talking about. The thing, it popped off, right? And on our way there, halfway through the trip, RV broke down. Some of you know about that because you helped the brother out. I greatly appreciate it. You see, all y'all was a part of this. Y'all was a part of all this, and some of you don't even know it. RV broke down. We stopped to get gas. There was nothing wrong to RV. It wasn't overheating, nothing. We had a smooth trip. We stopped to get gas. We filled it up. You know, I checked everything, made sure there wasn't no leaks. Crunk it up. It crunk right, it crunk right up. Got the going and everything in it. <clears throat> just started acting crazy. It was the Lord that was doing it because some of you don't remember this, but I'm gonna, you know, take retell the story in, in this part. The RV broke down. We was do, we couldn't do over like 25 miles per hour, and the way we was going, it was it was hilly. Oh my God, it was so many hills because we, we were like, hey, we can just we can coast, but it was so many hills that when we picked up speed, then we would lose speed because we had to go up a hill again. It was it was a crazy situation. It was something out of a you can say out of a scary movie. The RV broke down in some, and we say backwoods, country town, something out of a scary movie. It was so dark. Don't didn't know where I was at at like one, two, three o'clock in the morning. I had to. Uh, the RV was pulling a vehicle. Then I had um 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 uh the uh the U-Haul. It was pulling a vehicle, right? We had to unhook both of them, leave one so I can get my family to a safe place. Had to come back in the middle of the night by myself, hook the vehicle back up at like 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, pull, pull it. Um, then I had, to, I had to drop one of the cars off because I, you know, I couldn't, pull it, couldn't pull it with the vehicle on there, obviously. But I had to drop one, I had to take the car off the off the ramp in the middle of the night. My wife didn't know what she was doing. She was like, oh my God, we gonna, we know, we, we, Lord, we perish. Um, so I had to take, take, it was just a crazy situation. I'm trying to <laughs> sell everything that happened. We had to take it off. Uh, then I had to get them somewhere safe, go back and get the vehicle. Uh, then get the, get, then get the car dolly because I didn't want to leave the car dolly there because then I would have been responsible for it. Um, yeah. Yeah. It was just so much that happened. But, a lady, a white lady, it, I think it had to be like, at this point in time, like three or four o'clock in the morning, because after it was all said and done, we was praying in the middle of the street and the sun was coming up. It was, it was something, something glorious. It was something glorious, something that you know was straight from God. This lady stopped, didn't know who I was, black man in the middle of, uh, you know, a, a white town, pretty much. And she stopped and she asked me what was going on. And I told her, uh, you know, I'm a pastor, moving, blase, blase, and she stayed with me the whole time. She is the one that called and got the tow truck to come and get the RV. Now, if you don't know, you can't pull no RV with a regular tow truck. You got to pull it with the same one they pull 18 wheelers, wheelers with. And so I'm like, Lord, I ain't got no money for all this, Lord. Good Lord. I ain't, you know, they, I, I'm, I'm like, I'm concerned like they're going to bust my head. You know, how much is it going to be? Because I'm asking, like, how much is it going to be? How much is it going to be? You know? And so it ended up being like $100. It, it, it wasn't it wasn't much. And then it was on a it was in a time period where I want to say it was like a holiday or something like that. So it was kind of like hard to get in contact with people. I can't really um, remember or whatever. But um, it ended up being like $100, right, for them to tow it. Then they had to fix it. They had to order the parts for it. Um, like I said, this was in the midst of 
when it popped off, when they were talking about they were going to be shutting down the borders and everything, that's when we, we said, hey, we're gone. We, let, let's, let's go. We want to hurry up and get there before they actually do that. We didn't know if they were going to do it or not. So we're like, we out, we out, we out. RV, like I said, RV breaks down. They got to order the parts. So now we in a hotel. And you know hotels ain't cheap. And we end up staying there like, they said it was going to be done. So we think we're going to stay there one day. But we end up staying two days. I think we may end up staying three days. And then we like, look, we can't, we can't afford this. I had my, um, I had my, um, my, my wife's niece. She was with us, she was with us because we went and picked her up, um, in Montgomery, um, to take her to her, her dad and everything. So it was a lot, it was just a lot going on, a lot going on. So I'm having to pay for the hotel, pay for all this, uh, you know, it's unexpected ex expenses. You know what I'm saying? My, so my funds is those ain't going down and down. I'm like, I need this money for 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 this and for that. And so you know, I had I had to had to pay to get the RV fixed, which that was whew, we ain't we ain't gonna talk about that. They could have they could have bust me uh, bust me over my head a little bit a little bit more, but you know, they had to jack the RV up in the air to drop the tank because the fuel pumps went out. Like I said, this is how you know it was God because. The RV gave no indication that the fuel pumps were bad. We made it almost, you must say, almost halfway there. So it got to the point, you know, um, like I said, we was in a hotel. Um, you know, I got my knee, I got uh, my my niece, you can call her my niece, uh, with me. You know, I got I, I got to pay for the hotels for all these nights and everything. Um, you know, I got I got I got to feed feed everybody. I'm like, you know, what I'm saying, but I'm you know. Lord, I know you got me. I know you got me there because I know the Lord has led me here because I met a lady in the middle of the street and she started telling me her problems. How she needs to get get back right with the Lord and, and all the different things. And then, you know, it, it literally brought me to tears because I knew that not only that, but it was like it was like the the stamp of approval, like you said, the nail in the coffin, like, okay, Lord, I see what you're doing. Like the Lord already gave me confirmation that this is where he was leading me. But when you're going through something, it's those trials and tribulations. I tell y'all that's going to test you. Like, who wants to go through that? My wife, like I said, she was, you know what I'm saying, out of it at the, at the time period. She, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I want to do. She she running back because the RV was on the hill and the RV was rolling back and everything. It was, like I said, it was crazy. So I had to, you know what I'm saying, calm her down. To, you know, trust in the Lord, woman. Calm down. You know what I'm saying? The Lord got us and everything. So, like I said, it was a crazy situation. Some out of, out of a movie, right? But, um, you know, me... Ministering to that lady at four o'clock in the morning, when the four or five o'clock in the morning, when the sun was coming up, it literally brought me to tears because when she started talking and telling me all these different things, it brought me to tears because it was the Lord showing me like, I got you, I got you, I'm moving you to where I want you to move and be in position for some other things. I didn't know what those other things were. Hence, this house that I'm standing at right now. Um, so it was that and with some other stuff that Lord was just, you know, he was showing me, like, just give me confirmation after confirmation after confirmation, right? Um, so, you know, I just had to, you know what I'm saying, keep my sanity, you know what I'm saying, keep, you know what I'm saying? keep, keep the faith, um, you know, not, not get stressed out because, you know, my wife's going to see, you know, that's going to, that's going to go, go on her and everything. She's already going through what she's going through, whatnot, and everything. So I got to, you know, keep my calm as, as the man and everything. So, um, they said the RV wasn't going to be fixed in time. And like I said, they were talking about they were going to be shutting down the highways and everything, whatever. So we were like, let's go. Let's go. Get your stuff. We finna go because we can't keep on affording to pay, uh, pay this hotel, stay in this hotel or whatever. So we got everything that we could out the RV that was of importance. We left the RV there. We loaded up in the van and we drove, we drove to Arkansas. We told them, hey, when it gets done, um, you know, call us and we'll come back and get it. So we made the Arkansas, um, then the RV, it was done, uh, I think it was like done maybe like a Friday or whatever, and I think we end up, I don't know if we came and got that weekend or we just said we just gonna wait, but anywho, we drove back <laughs> to go get the RV, and then everything was good, we drove the RV the rest of the trip to, um, um, to Hot Springs and everything, so... Then I get here, 
you know, I got my online business, my, my also my book business, and that's not really bringing any money in uh, at that particular point in time. When our sales were slow, they were on and off and everything. So then I started to, uh, I started to do Spark, and what Spark is, Spark is a uh, company of Walmart where you deliver groceries. So we start we start doing that. We start doing that because it was it was jumping out the gym when we came because you know the virus popped off, right? So nobody wanted really want to go anywhere and everything. So we are you know driving, 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 driving. I end up putting my mom on. My mom ended up doing it. So we was able to do that and sustain ourselves. And also we had brothers and sisters in Christ that you know helped out and looked out for us, stuff like that. Um, and I was still focused on that piece of land that we bought i was focused on developing that you know i was learning and you know growing and like i said the vision started to grow more and more as i did more and more research i was like hmm 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 because let me let me add this because you know i want to make sure I, I i say this um the goal is to to be at a point where i can give certain brothers and sisters i'm not giving everybody Certain brothers and sisters, I want to I want to get y'all free houses, free houses that's completely paid for, your lights, your utilities, your food paid for for a year. But also, I want to set up a program where you don't only get a free house, or we come in and we renovate the house that you already have and or pay it off and everything. But also set you up with a investment property, so you have your house is paid for, so you got to worry about that, and then you'll have one investment property that. You know, Lord willing, I'm going to create a program or have somebody do it for me that knows more than I do, where it's going to teach you how to pretty much do real estate investing. So that puts you in a position to have residual income so you don't have to work as much. You can work smarter and not harder, which allows you to spend more time with your family and more time doing things of the Lord. Like I said, I am, you know, Zen, I am the way I am, but I do have grace. I, gr I do have grace for people. So that's the ultimate goal. And I've, I've been, if y'all listen, I've been hinting at it. I've been hinting. I'm like, you know, I got some things in the works. I got some things in the work. I can't really say right now because, you know, I don't, I don't know. But rather this situation played out the way that it played, my focus was on, my focus was, was on that one piece of land. I'm like, look, if it take me a year, two years, three years, four years, five years, how many years it take me to get this piece of land developed, it's going to get developed. It's going to get done. Now, at this point in time, I'm like, I'm not going to live in it. I'm I'm developing. I'm putting something there. I'm going to rent it out, you know what I'm saying, or, or, or flip it or, or whatever. That's my, mind, my mindset now. After, you know, I had, you know, gained more knowledge and, you know, that God was leading me, right? Because I'm like, I can do wind blowing. I don't know if y'all can hear it. Um, I can do greater things by doing it this way than, you know, doing that way because I can help more people, right? So, We've been here for over a year. We've been here for over a year. You know, I've been driving, you know what I'm saying, delivering groceries, stuff like that, paying my bills, uh, you, know, uh, trying to, you know, trying to save up money to develop that one piece of land that I bought before we even got here, right? So like I was telling you, this ain't about the real estate. Y'all think it's about the real estate. Real estate is just a piece of it. This is about obedience because I got to this position because of my obedience. I was obedient to what the spirit spirit was showing me. I was obedient to where God was leading me. And he gave me confirmation at the confirmation, at the confirmation, at the confirmation, at the confirmation. Not only where I could see, but also in his word, you know. Um, so I don't, I don't want y'all to get it twisted. Like, oh, he's talking about material stuff. But then if I talk about that, I'll give you a free house. Then you ain't got no problem with that. You see what I'm saying? Don't be a hypocrite. Let me go back in this house or go back on this back porch because I don't know how loud this wind this wind is but that's how that's how people are that's how people are if you talk about these different things or whatever then they'll say you're being materialistic but then when you talk about um um being in a position to give brothers and sisters free houses or you know what it, whatever it is to be in a position to help brothers and sisters on that level then oh oh yeah amen brother make it happen this that this that well we are already making it happen. It ain't a matter of make it happen. We are already making it happen because the Lord has made it happen, right? We we are already here. So like I said, um, this is about obedience. I'm in this position that I'm in 
because of my obedience, my obedience, my obedience, my obedience, my obedience. And because of my obedience, God blessed me with these, these different things. Right. So, um, like I said, we've been here for over a year. I want to say like maybe maybe like a year and a half. I, you know, I don't know, maybe a year and five months, four months. Hey, you know, you say a year and a half. Right. And my dad in law, the one I told you I just passed away. This is the house that he was living in. This is the house he was living in, right? This house is right around the street from where you see me recording the videos at. It's literally like a minute, a minute walking distance. So I would come over here every now and then, you know, visit him, chop it up with him. You know what I'm saying? If I if I, I would cook, I would bring him some food and stuff like that. Um, but I had no intention of, of buying this house. No, I I wasn't looking at this house to buy this house. Nothing. Nothing. It was just the house that my wife's dad be in, they all, you know what I'm saying, the homeless people, and you know what I'm saying, drug folks be over and, and, and all these other things, right? So, like I said, I wasn't studying it. He fell ill. He fell ill, and y'all know the situation because of the video I just did prior to this one. Or, I mean, it just depends on when I upload it because I already recorded that video, but I haven't uploaded it yet. I don't, I don't think. I got to check because <laughs> I uploaded it, but I don't know if it's finished. So, y'all bear with me. Um, so yeah, he fell ill and he had to go in the hospital. And then if y'all don't know, he passed away. But in the process of that, my wife got in contact with the owner of the house. He didn't own the house. He had an agreement with the lady that owned the house to do work on it, but he didn't do the work. He did not do the work and he didn't do the work right because I'm having to go in and fix a lot of stuff that wasn't done right and isn't up to code or whatever. Um, so uh the money that some of you brothers and sisters have been oh have been uh have been sending we've been putting it we've been putting in this project right here we've been putting in this project right here and not just that but uh you know obviously my own money and stuff like that you know money in my family and everything or whatnot but um yeah you know we're not you know some people just they take and they do whatever they do with it no this is what we're doing with it we're putting it in this project because we're going to flip this project, get the money out of it, make our profit because the real estate game is jumping right now, jumping out the gym, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. I got a 10 phase, 10 phase of stage uh, steps that's going to build income that is going to pay for those free houses, free land for my brothers and sisters in Christ. I can't buy, I can't give it for free if I don't have the money to pay for it. You see what I'm saying? So, this is what's going on. But um, let me tell you how we got this house. <laughs> Before I tell you how we got the house, I want to tell you the terms of this house. Go look at how real estate is jumping out of the gym right now. If you don't know, lumber is, is through the roof, right? We got this house and the land next door, this land right here, and we're trying to get uh we're trying to get this little piece we're trying to get all that right there too because there was a house over there but the house end up uh end up burning down a while back so we're trying to get that and there's so much land around here to to build and everything um and what we're doing we're building we're building affordable houses we're not building not in this neighborhood we're not building no you know what I'm saying two hundred thousand dollar three hundred thousand dollar houses that neighborhood doesn't doesn't call for that I'm not saying that it can't certain areas but majority of the neighborhood is more affordable houses your you know what I'm saying your eighty hundred thousand dollar houses you know in in that range or whatever um so we got the house and it's a solid house solid solid house just in in each rehab and we got the land next to it and the land is big enough to put another house on it for twelve thousand five hundred dollars we got the house for ten thousand dollars and we got the land for two thousand five hundred dollars. We bought both of them from the, from the same owner, which was the lady that my dad in law had an agreement with to do the work on the house. She gave him the money to fix the house, and he was supposed to fix it up. And then after a year, kind of like a lease option, after a year, she was going to give him the option to buy it. He fell ill, and pretty much we came in, we negotiated a deal. Because she was just going to let it go. She was like, I ain't worried about it. I, you know, I'm retired and everything. We were like, no, 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 don't let it go. Don't let it go. We want the house. We want the house. So we end up getting the house under contract 
with the land, well, I should say the house and the land, under contract for $12,500. $12,500. But it gets even better. No money down. Let me repeat that again. No money down. Let me repeat that one more time. No money down. And we don't have to make no payments. Our first payment for three months. <laughs> I was not looking at this house. It was just a house that my, my dad-in-law was in. But the Lord literally just dropped it into my lap. Hey, you want it? Well, who going to turn the house down like that? $10,000? And the payments are $225? $225? $225? a month come on man come on come on you can't tell me that this ain't god i mean you can you can say it ain't god all you want to but i know it's god like i said i wasn't looking to buy this house this house was not on my radar i wasn't looking to buy houses i was focused on my piece of land and getting that developed and then this deal happened to come through because my dad in law fell ill so, you know, mess up situation with him and, and everything will happen to him. But, hey, the Lord works in mysterious ways. The Lord, the Lord does that. We see that all throughout the scriptures where the Lord will use the wicked to end up, end up blessing you. And it's crazy because he didn't, leave his, he didn't leave his children no inheritance. A man that was a carpenter, this house should have been done. A man that had multiple properties and multiple houses throughout his lifetime, at the end of the day, he didn't have anything to leave his children except more debt. And heartache and everything. So we have to do we have to you know be different. We have to do things differently. So not only did I come with one piece of land, but the Lord blessed me with the house and the land next to it. But we're gonna sell the land and the house together because it's gonna hold more value, right? Unless when the time comes we can work it out where we can get the money out of it the initial money that we put into this house, keep it, put a renter in it, and then we can clear off that piece of land and then put another house there and then get that over there because that's for sale. It, it's for sale. I'm going to show it to y'all. Uh, get that and then put another piece of, piece, of, piece of property there and then put a piece of property, obviously, on the original piece of land that I purchased. So once I get to a certain point, it's going to continue to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. Then I can contact my brothers and sisters and be like, hey, I got you. I got, I got you. I got you. I got, I got you. So we are officially real estate investors. And we are here because of the grace of God and because, you know, not just my obedience, but each and every one of, each and every one of you who have been obedient to the Lord, rather is, is prayer um, rather, rather, it's fellowship. Rather, you know, saying you gave to the ministry financially. Hey, if you want to give to the ministry financially now to help a brother with this project and everything, then hey, but don't be giving it because you feel like, oh, I want Brother King, I want him to succeed now because I want to get a free house or whatever he's going to do when he gets in that position, Lord willing. Don't do it because of that. Do it because you're doing it from a from a sincere and a pure heart. Do it because of that, because you know anything could happen to me. Anything could happen to me, right? But you should still want to give to your brothers and sisters in Christ when you see them out here doing things for the Lord for the kingdom. Like I said, this ain't people. Oh, you trying to get rich? And this, anybody trying to get rich? If I get rich, I get rich. But I'm already rich anyway. If I if I get a certain amount of money, like oh my God, you got this amount of money. It is what it is. That money is going to be turned around and reinvested. To help people even more so we can get out and from under this wicked system. That's the ultimate goal. But how are we going to do it if we ain't here making no moves, if we ain't living the faith that we're claiming? I left my cleaning service that I had. I was getting paid for 12 plus years. Every week they paid me. I left that because of my faith. Because of my faith. And here I am. And God has rewarded me because of my faith. And he's going to reward each and every one, each and every one of you. Like I said, don't don't think I don't know. I know, I know. That's why that's why I didn't I ain't told nobody. I mean, I ain't say I ain't told nobody. I told I told a few people, but uh, I ain't just come out and 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 tell everybody what I mean, because I I want to see, I want to see because I know if I just put it out there, then people they want to jump on it.
because they want the end result benefits of it. But now I want to see where your heart is at. I want to see where your heart is at. So don't think I, I don't know. So um, this is where we at, y'all. Um, I'm excited. We've been working on this project for uh, about, a, about a week and a half. We've made tremendous progress because the way he was living, he was living terrible. It was, it was dirty. It was, oh my God, it was nasty. So I'm going to turn the camera around and I'm going to show y'all what we're working with. And then um, we, we're going to get ready to close it out. So this is the back porch, little small uh, concrete slab. That's that other piece of land I was telling you about. There used to be a small house there. Um, it burnt down a while back. This is the backyard. We got our generator out here because we ain't got no electrical yet. Uh, we got to fix this. We got to lift it up. And also, you know, when I get to a certain point, I know some of you, you do construction, right? You do plumbing. You do electrical. Guess what? When I get to a certain point, I'm gonna be able. I want to be able to call my brothers and sisters out to wherever I'm at, or go where you at, and you do the work, and I put the money in your pocket. You see what I'm saying? So this is the you no know, stairs or whatever. All this gotta come down. We gotta redo this. Um, that's another part of it. We got vinyl siding on it. We gotta do a little work back here, as you see. This is our new door. We put new front and rear doors on here. Got the full glass on the back. So what we're gonna do back here is we're gonna um, lift this up and then we're gonna box it in. We're gonna box it in to make it safe because you can see that's pretty uh, pretty scary. So we got a brand new door with the frame on it. Um, this is our kitchen, our kitchen area. Get the door open. This is our kitchen area. Uh, they have the hookup for wash and dry drain, but we're not going to put it there. We replaced all the windows. We had to gut this wall, uh, you know, because it was, you know, old and, you know, leaking and stuff like that. We took all the old cabinets out. And this is what we're going with. We got this on sale. It was, it was $250. We paid one hundred and ten dollars for it. That's how you do. That's how you do stuff. You want to get stuff on a on a deal. All you gotta do is shop around. You gotta wait. And you gotta be patient. So we're gonna convert this into a the sink portion because the sink one is it's the same. It's the same size. Same size that we that we're using. And we're just gonna board this up so this doesn't come out. And then we're gonna remove this drawer. And then remove that and then we can put our countertop over there and then that will be our sink base so i wanted to i want to go ahead and get that because it was on sale or i should say clearance or reduce or whatever so i can go ahead and have it or whatnot um we'll have our vent fan right there our stove is going to be right there instead of our washer and dryer our refrigerator is going to be right here um then we have our cabinets obviously going that way with a lazy suits in the corner coming right there Boom, boom, boom. We're gonna clean all that up and we're gonna keep that open and use it for storage space. And then we're gonna make, we're gonna put a uh, piece of wood on here, on all the way across, pretty much to the end of here. And we're gonna stain it. We're gonna stain it with a natural, a natural wood finish, just to, like offset it. The kitchen's gonna be gray and white. We're gonna keep it nice and clean. This was the dining room. But we made it into a third bedroom because you get more value when you add a bedroom or, or a bath. So the house is a two one, but now it's a three one. So we got our door for it. As you see, there was no sheetrock up on the ceiling. We done all that. Got a brand new door to go right here, hang it up and everything. And they can use this as a third bedroom or they can use it for whatever they want to use it for. So we initially had the uh, refrigerator in this area right here. And then we have, we want to do a, a washer and dryer cabinet where you couldn't even see it was going to be hidden right there. So we were going to use that. But when we add this, this uh, bedroom, um, it was just too tight. So the kitchen is big enough, as you see, to be a kitchen slash dining area kitchen slash dining area. So that's what we're gonna do here. 
a wife designed it all. This is um the new hallway that was created because obviously we put the wall there for the third bedroom. Uh, this is the the living room. This is the living room. Um, the sheetrock was done in here. You see, it got a brand new light and everything. That's my uh, dad-in-law's, the one who passed away. That's his old piano. Uh, new front door and screen door. Still got some work to do on it, as you see. Trim and everything, make some adjustments. We may do a electric fireplace here and build, build something up. We don't know yet. So we opened this up. As you see, this is a very wide hallway, which I actually like it. It obviously was not that far. You see where that wood is at right there? That's how um, wide it was, but we opened it up. And the reason that we opened it up was to make it make the room look bigger. You know, it just felt kind of like tight. It felt kind of like tight right here with this new wall right here. So we opened it up to one of the studs and then it makes it look bigger than what it actually is. I actually like it. Um, this is the other hallway you come in here. Um, now this is where we're putting the, the washer and dryer instead of what you just saw. We're putting it over here. So what we did was we took part of the bathroom and we built this wall up. As you see, you built this wall up because there was a wall right here for the bathroom. All this was, it was, it was blocked off. So we just uh, built out, took part of the bathroom for a stackable wash and dry. As you see, we got our, um, we got our towel, our towel down like a wood finish. And a lot of this stuff was free because we already had it laying around. So that's a good thing. Uh, this is our bathroom. We're doing ceramic tile in here. We're doing like a gray polished marble look, gray and white, gray and white, gray and white. Uh, but I'll let y'all see it later. Obviously all this is gonna be replaced and fixed up. Um, oh yeah. And we took this wall out because this was a closet. Let me open this door right here. So get some light. So this is all blocked off, like I said. And you get a wall right here. And the closet went from here all the way back there. And we were like, that's that's too big of a closet. Too big of a closet. So we took that space and we cut the closet in half. And you see they still have enough closet space. Um, this is a bedroom. You can be the master or whatever. Because the bedrooms, um, this bedroom and the other bedroom, they're the same sizes. We haven't done the sheetrock in here yet. Yeah. Um, so we go down here and it's the same layout. But what we did over here is we made a linen closet. We made a linen closet. So this is just obviously rough. It's not finished out. Put a towel down and everything. And this is part of the workstation. We got doors to hang up. Got them off of uh, Facebook for a good deal. You get what you can get on a good deal and don't pay full price. Um, we have done the sheetrock in here. You see we got our supplies and this is the closet. This is our closet. That's the back side of the linen closet. You see how deep this closet is. It goes all the way back there. And that's the other side of the tub. And we're gonna put a door there so they need to get to the, the pipes and everything. And we uh, fixed all that. So, it's not a big house, but it's, you know, it's enough space. So 1,064 square feet. Uh, here we are building some columns to give us some curb appeal. I love these columns, but I had working on these myself because my, my contractor, he was doing them, um, but he rushed it and I didn't like it. So I came back and pretty much re undid what he did. Because he had it, uh, he had it like one, he had another one, a smaller one going around there. And just the quality of it wasn't to my liking. So I ended up uh, taking it down. I was out here 
last night uh, uh, finishing it up. I may put some at the some trim at the bottom too. I don't know yet. And I gotta finish that back side up. Um, yeah, I'm gonna show you the layout. So this is the porch. You come in. You got the living room right there. That's the hallway with the open open concept hallway, or whatever. Bedroom, kitchen, bedroom, bathroom. See, I wash and dry right there. Uh, bedroom, pretty simple. Got our, uh, stove, and that's the layout that I was showing y'all. This layout that I was showing y'all right there, just so you can get a general idea. We are doing things officially. We have our permit. We have a permit. You see, got my wife's name right there. Those are people that we bought it from. And let me step back so y'all can get a view of it. Like I said, there's nothing on this street. There's really nothing over here. So there's plenty of opportunity, plenty, plenty of opportunity. But that's the where the house was. So we're going to try to purchase that and then, you know, eventually put a house there. I put some solar lights up here for security because this street can be pretty dark at night. It's a street light there, but as you see, those columns, they look real nice. And I'm gonna um, stain them with a natural cedar stain. And that's the stuff we've been, some of the stuff that we cleared out, we have more stuff than that. But as you see, we've been, been clearing out the land you hear me because the wind is blowing. We've been clearing the land because we, like I said, we purchased the house and the land together. And the land goes the same, pretty much the same distance back as, as this house. And it goes all the way over here. There's some more houses down there. And then you got your, you know, some your main street, walk down there to the gas station. There's another uh, house right here that they want some work on it too. So all pretty much there, all this we got plus this house on that land, and then we're we're shooting for the other other piece. So um, yeah, got some shingles we got to fix. We had a storm come through here, uh, real bad, real bad storm. Some of you remember. They say it was a, a, a severe thunderstorm, but I think it was I think it was a tornado. We had one form the other day, but it, it didn't touch down. You could, you could literally see it as a funnel cloud. But um, yeah, this is what this is what we had on this. Um, we got all this. That's pretty much the property line. Cut the grass there. We gotta get the electrical. We gotta get some uh, some plumbing work and stuff done. They just so backed up, man. It's just so backed up. But uh, yeah. I don't know what else to say, y'all. I don't know what to say. I thank you for your support. Um, if you want to continue to support, you can, obviously. Y'all know how to do that. But we, we're not just talking. We're not just talking. This is this ain't just talk. It's not just talk. This is this is real, you know. <laughs> this is real. This is real. We are we are doing this. We are doing this. So um with that being said. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for your prayers. As you know, the truth is not debated. It is declared.